Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, to the uh, commencement orientation for spring uh, 2023. Congratulations to everyone out there uh, this evening who is celebrating uh, commencement as we uh, fast approach May 20th. I'm sure you and your families are excited uh, to be participating today as well as excited uh, to prepare for uh, one of the biggest days of your life, which is commencement uh, and graduating from the University of Houston downtown. My name is Daniel Villanueva and I serve as the Vice President uh, for Enrollment Management at the University of Houston downtown. And I will be your host today for uh, this virtual commencement orientation. We have a number of guests uh, who are with me here in uh, the virtual uh, webinar. And so uh, they will be interjecting and helping to answer some of the question and answers that are popping up. So as um, you all are asking questions, uh, we are trying to respond just as fast as, as we can. Uh, you all are asking questions already, and I am seeing them come up. And so when you uh, do ask questions and I can answer them throughout the presentation, I will uh, go ahead and answer them. Uh, for those that uh, I cannot answer, uh, my colleagues are online helping us to answer uh, the questions that you may have. This is an important day for uh, you all as the culmination of your work really uh, comes together uh, at the commencement ceremony. Uh, we are excited to host the ceremony. And on behalf of our campus administration, our president, Dr. Lauren J. Blanchard, and our provost, Dr. Bordelon, uh, we welcome you to today's orientation. We have prepared uh, a slide deck that we will share with you. Uh, we are also recording this session uh, and we'll share it on the commencement website. So if you are uh, taking notes and you are trying to get all of your questions answered, know that this will be recorded and posted on the commencement website uh, within a couple of days from today. So that's a little bit of the housekeeping items. I'm sure you all are ready to find out uh, the most important information. Uh, but before we get started with the full presentation concerning the details of the actual ceremony, we have a couple of guests here with us today. Uh, that are going to speak from alumni affairs. So Sandra, if you're here, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Villanueva. We're going to start with Danielle and the first slide. Hello, I am Danielle Soria Orozco. I am proud alumni and program manager for alumni relations here at UHD. Um, I am always incredibly honored when I get the opportunity to personally um, invite our soon-to-be Gator graduates to connect with us with, as the UHD Alumni Association. Um, upon graduation, you will be an automatic member of our Alumni Association. Um, and so I guess I know you've got a lot going on, lots of final coursework, uh, preparation for graduation, it's super exciting. So I just want to keep the message clear from us, and that is that if you would like to stay connected with us post-graduation, it's just important that you share with us how you want us to do that um, in terms of your updated email address. So uh, a personal email address, it's not your Gator mail that you will be able to access post-graduation is what you'll wanna do. Uh, so you wanna enter that, uh, there's a QR code, I believe, that we were going to share. There we are. And so if you scan the QR code, um, it won't affect any of your current communication that you'll be getting but it will uh, allow us to reach you and uh, share with you the things that were on the slide before, which is uh, mainly our uh, Alumni Connect, which will give you information about um, upcoming events, alumni profiles, networking, um, campus news, community service opportunities, everything. So we, we do truly hope that you will uh, stay connected with us past graduation, and uh, this is the way to do so. So thank you so much. I uh, just wanted to share a nice uh, congratulations and a welcome. Okay, next slide, please. I'm here representing Advancement and University Relations. The job of my office, we raise money uh, for the university. There are two ways you can support UHD that benefit you at commencement time. 
Uh, anyone who follows this link and the QR code to make a gift of $20 and 23 cents or more will cut your portion of the ceremony out of the great big long commencement video and email it to you after the event. Um, you'll see on this screen, there's a picture of a brick in Alumni Plaza where we've commemorated last semester's graduates um, for a, a, a record-breaking participation of $3,500, more than $3,500. Uh, your class is already just under 2,000. You have the possibility to break last semester's record, so I encourage you to. Uh, it helps you HD. It gets you a cool clip you can share with um, family members who aren't able to attend. Um, it's a win-win. Next slide, please. If you want to take it a little bit further, oh, where's my brick slide? Go back. I can talk about it with the one that's there. I don't have the QR code here, but if you wanted to go a little bit further, you could, for a gift of starting at $100, get a personalized brick in Alumni Plaza like the one on this slide. Um, the the $100 brick is, is about half that size, and that's a $250 brick. You can use it to uh, memorialize a person who was important in your college journey, recognize your own graduation. Um, I used my brick to thank my parents, um, but it's just another option, and uh, it's on our website under Alumni Bricks. Congratulations to you all. Thank you for having us here as part of the presentation. Uh, enrollment management. We really appreciate your support and uh, go Gators. Thank you so much uh, to our colleagues from uh, University Advancement and Alumni Affairs. We uh, really appreciate your partnership in celebrating our graduates. Uh, I do want to remind you all or uh, share with you all the importance of giving back and being uh, an active participant in the Alumni Association as my colleagues uh, just mentioned, um, most of uh, the money that you provide back to the university does go directly to students. Uh, and if you are a recipient of any of our scholarships or any uh, Gator funds available, uh, it likely came from uh, former alumni uh, who came before you, providing donations and support uh, to the association. As a first-generation college student uh, myself and a first-generation professional, I can tell you the importance of giving back and staying engaged with your university and the opportunities that it can provide are, are absolutely tremendous. So thank you so much for joining us uh, from University Advancement Alumni Affairs, uh, and we uh, wish you the best of support in these BRIC initiatives. So uh, moving on, I do wanna share uh, my social media handles. Uh, this is a professional Facebook and a professional Instagram. Uh, we do share information uh, on uh, commencement as well as the university uh, on this page on these pages. This is me. Uh, it really comes to my phone. I really do answer you uh, if you do have messages and you do um, send uh, questions or comments about things. Uh, what the reason I share the social media is for um, direct access to emergency communication as well as updates. What we have found is there are a lot of changes with, um, hold on, I'm going to take my watch off because you all are adding me. Um, what I've learned is uh, there are a number of changes that will occur or likely to occur uh, between now and commencement. And the easiest way to get the messages out regarding any changes that may be forthcoming that we cannot see uh, is via social media. We will send emails and text messages as well as updating the website, uh, but it is a lot quicker for us to post it on social media and get it out directly uh, so that you and your guests can uh, receive the information uh, just as soon as possible. So I encourage you uh, to reach out uh, and like and follow these pages, uh, at least during the duration of commencement season, uh, and you'll get a little insight about the university myself as well as students. Okay. So uh, I also want to encourage you all to uh, consider graduate programs at the University of Houston downtown. If you are a current graduate student who is graduating, uh, we thank you for participating in our graduate programs and encourage you to go on uh, to postgraduate uh, opportunities such as doctoral or professional studies. 
Uh, but for those of you that are undergraduate students uh, who may be considering graduate programs, I do want to share with you uh, that we have a number of graduate programs on the screen uh, displayed and we are admitting students for the fall currently. So if you uh, are a undergraduate student and you're uh, interested in any of these programs, please contact uh, the admissions office to begin your application today. Uh, we are offering uh, UHD undergrads who apply for graduate programs, an application fee waiver, as well as a, a waiver for your UHD transcript to help expedite uh, your graduate application. So if you do find yourself interested in any of these programs here, please reach out to uh, admissions and they can help you uh, complete your application for consideration uh, of our graduate programs. So uh, we're gonna start uh, with an overview of today's presentation. It's really broken down into three sections. Uh, what you do now before the ceremony will be the first section that we cover. Uh, then we're gonna move into the actual ceremony, which occurs on May 20th, and then uh, some post-ceremony activities, which occur after May 20th. So we're gonna move directly into pre-ceremony activities. So for our uh, pre-ceremony activities, uh, want to remind everyone that the ceremony RSVP deadline has been ext extended to 11.59 p.m. tonight. Uh, many of you may be saying, I don't know what that means, uh, but for those that uh, are unsure, I'll clarify. When you completed your uh, graduation application, you answered a question on the application that said, will you be attending the ceremony? If you mark yes, we have you listed as attended. If you mark unsure, you need to go in and complete your RSVP reservation if you do intend to participate in the ceremony. If you marked no and would like to change it to a yes, you also need to update your uh, a a ceremony RSVP uh, by 11.59 p.m. tonight. So what does that mean? That means that after tonight, if you do not clarify to us whether you're participating or not, we will take the stance that you are not participating in the ceremony and will not be prepared to receive you at the ceremony. Uh, if you have changed from undecided or not attending, check your Gator email and let us know tonight. You can email us at uhdgraduation at uhd.edu. Uh, and students who do not, uh, did not RSVP yes, will not be allowed to participate uh, in the ceremony and uh, will be turned away. So just wanna make sure everyone understands uh, those uh, commitments that you need to make by the end of this evening. Uh, Pre-ceremony details, we're going to cover the Latin Honor Court. There's always an immense amount of questions regarding uh, the Latin Honor Courts. We're also going to talk about commencement announcement, uh, graduation photos, regalia, the graduation fee, picking up your walk card, as well as passing your classes. So uh, to start off, we are looking at our UHD Latin Honor Courts. Uh, I want to make sure um, that everyone understands that uh, what you're receiving uh, from your college advising centers and or the uh, university registrar's office are preliminary honor designations uh, and your cords. These are not official uh, because we do not have your final grades to determine the honors that will be articulated on your transcript or your diploma. So what we are doing is uh, looking at where you are at today without this semester's grades included. So they are preliminary uh, and they will be called out on the stage as well as you will be allowed to wear the honor cord. However, if you do uh, bad this semester in your classes and it brings down your GPA, that may not be the designation that's actually on your transcript or diploma. Uh, we'll go over the designations here in just a moment. Uh, but know that what we are um, calling out at the ceremony and the cord that you are wearing at the ceremony are preliminary honors and final honors, which includes the grades that you have earned this semester, uh, will dictate your final uh, honors uh, designation on your transcript and diploma. Uh, only undergraduate students are eligible for honors. Uh, graduate students are expected to have a B average or better. And so only undergraduate students uh, will, will have um, designated honors and honor courts available. You can see here students who complete 42 hours or more at UHD, of which 24 of those must be upper level. Upper level is consisting of 3,000 and 4,000 level courses. 
may qualify for the uh, designation of honors on your diploma and transfer. Uh, it is based on uh, a minimum of 30 credit hours that you must complete at the University of Houston downtown and only credit hours earned at UHD are considered. Transfer credits are not considered in the GPA calculation for university honors. In addition, uh, here is the breakdown for the uh, Latin honors designation. Uh, those with a GPA of a 3.8 to 4.0 are graduating with summa cum laude. Those uh, that are 3.60 to a 3.79 are uh, graduating with magnus and laude. And then those uh, with a 3.4 to 3.59 are graduating from Lottie uh, from the university. Those are the Latin honor designations. In terms of regalia, uh, we uh, the bookstore is available for regalia, and you are eligible to purchase and pick up your regalia now at the UHD bookstore. The bookstore is open Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And on Friday, uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., we are trying to work with the bookstore to extend the Friday before commencement, which would be the 19th uh, to 5 p.m., but we don't have that confirmation just yet. So please make sure you uh, fit within those windows and can contact the bookstore using the email address that's on the screen or the phone number uh, to make arrangements for your regalia pickup. In addition, those who have ordered them online through Herc Jones can pick them up at the bookstore as well during normal business hours. Moving on to the ceremony, which is our second section of uh, the presentation. Uh, the date is Saturday, uh, May 20th, 2023. Uh, we will be having commencement at NRG Stadium uh, in Houston, Texas. Uh, I wanna make sure that um, Everyone understands that there are multiple NRG locations on the NRG campus. I'll show you here in just a moment uh, the different variations of NRG, but we are actually in the NRG stadium, which is where the Houston Texas Texans play. There's an NRG arena, there's an NRG conference center, uh, and several other NRG stadium names uh, by and on the property, but we are in NRG stadium, home of the Houston Texans. There are two ceremonies. Ceremony one starts at 11 a.m. And that is for the Maryland Davies College of Business, uh, undergraduates and graduates, uh, as well as uh, the College of Sciences and Technology, uh, graduates and undergraduates. Uh, ceremony two is at 4 p.m. And that is for the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, graduates and undergraduates followed by uh, the College of Public Service graduates and undergraduates. So both ceremonies do have um, graduate students and undergraduates uh, proceeding. Graduate students will proceed first and then undergraduates will proceed from each of those colleges. So for instance, for ceremony one, uh, the graduate students within the Maryland Davies College of Business will uh, graduate first and then the undergraduate students in the Maryland Co Davies College of Business will then graduate Proceeded by the graduate students from the College of Sciences and Technology, and then the undergraduate students from the College of uh, Science and Technology. And that will be the same pattern uh, of walking uh, graduates for Ceremony 2. In terms of student check-in, uh, for Ceremony 1, if you're within those two colleges, your check-in begins at 10 a.m. Uh, that is when doors open. Uh, I would encourage you to be there at 10 a.m. when the doors open and not arrive at 10 a.m. Uh, into the parking lot. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. There is a limited amount of time between check-in when doors open and when the ceremony starts. So when we say ceremony one doors open at 10, you should probably get to the parking lot at 9.15 to 9.20. You should then walk from your parking spot, which is going to be a, 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 a distance, right? It's not up near next to the stadium. Uh, 10 to 15 minute walk to the stadium. And then by the time you go through security, uh, doors will be opening at about 10 a.m. So if you're arriving to the parking lot at 10 a.m., 
you may not make the ceremony time. And I'll get through just this just a, in a minute. Um, so I just wanna make sure you understand that the doors open for ceremony one at 10, doors open uh, for ceremony two at 3 p.m. But that's not when you should arrive. Uh, I know our people, I know our students, uh, and we are last minute. We think we can cut it. Uh, traffic will be okay. Weather's gonna be all right. God is on my side. I can tell you on this day, uh, you need to have anxiety, you need to have panic, and you need to be prepared because the timeline between um, when you get there and when the ceremony starts is very, very, very tight. Uh, so if you are like me, I'm an ish person, I'll be there like 10 ish, which is 10 15, 10 20. No, but the program's going to start without us, right? So you have got to get there uh, at least. 30 to 45 minutes before the doors open so that when the doors open, you are ready to come into the building. Only students who are approved to graduate and have RSVP'd as attending will be allowed to participate uh, in the ceremony. The next question that I see in the um, question and answer session, as well as being addressed here, are guest tickets. Um, guest ticketing uh, is not required for either one of these ceremonies. So uh, there are no tickets required for your guests. Um, there is no purchasing through Ticketmaster, through um, NRG. It is first come, first serve and open to uh, your family and friends. So um, there's gonna be a need for your family and friends to be there early and on time as well. In terms of parking, students uh, and guests will enter NRG Stadium parking through gates nine off of Kirby Drive. I'm gonna pull up a map here in just a moment and show you um, pictorially exactly where that is. Parking will cost $20 per car. I saw that there were a number of questions about, is there free parking? How much does it cost? Uh, NRG parking at the stadium is, is $20 per car and they are not accepting any cash payments. Uh, it has to be a credit card payment only. So for those of you who only have cash, uh, you may need to go get a uh, Visa credit card from CVS. Uh, and prepare to purchase uh, your parking with uh, NRG with a credit card. There are other NRG or there are other parking lots around NRG uh, that may be charging a different amount than this uh, and that may be taking cash. They are not the official parking lots for NRG, so we can't tell you what they're going to charge and we can't tell you what they're going to take. Uh, what you do see here on the screen is the official parking for NRG and the amount that they will uh, charge, which is $20 per vehicle, and uh, the that they will only take cash in, as a form of payment for the parking. So if you look here on the screen, you can see uh, the visual map of NRG layout. Uh, you can see that there's the training center, there's the NRG center, there's NRG arena. There's NRG Astrodome and NRG Stadium. We are in NRG Stadium. So when uh, you are parking and coming in, please make sure you're not going to NRG Arena uh, or NRG Center, uh, the Training Center or the Astrodome. Uh, there are other events that are happening in those uh, areas and in those buildings, perhaps even other uh, graduation ceremonies. So I would hate for you to walk over to the NRG Center and graduate uh, with another university or community college uh, and thinking UHD has just really messed this up. We are in the NRG Stadium home of the Houston Texans. And if you're looking here at the map, you can see the blue dot. This is the area uh, of where our uh, commencement ceremony will be. We will be utilizing the blue parking lot uh, on this uh, diagram and student and guest will park uh, coming into the parking lot through gate number nine. So you may be parked in parking lot, blue lot 18, 17, 16, 23, 22, 21, uh, 25, 24, 
Uh, and so you can see why I was saying uh, you can't get there at 10 o'clock because if you're in parking lot blue 27, I can tell you uh, as a big guy and a casual walker from lot 27 to NRG, that's a good 25 minute, uh, 25 minute walk with three stops and some heavy breathing. So think about uh, the time that it's gonna take you to get from these parking lot all the way uh, to NRG Stadium. So um, that is the parking lot view for student and guest parking. In terms of NRG bag policy, I wanna make sure you understand that we are renting the facility. This is a public facility and we have to adhere to uh, NRG's bag policy. If you'll go to the UHD uh, commencement website, you will uh, find an active link where you can uh, get these, uh, these actual details, but I have put them here on the screen. I'm not gonna read them in granular detail. You can go back and watch the YouTube video uh, to read these in detail as well. Uh, we will share them via social media. They are currently hyperlinked to uh, the UHD registrar webpage for commencement. Uh, and here is the second slide covering the NRG uh, bag check policy uh, that covers diaper bags, medical bags, cameras, seat cushions, uh, strollers, as well as bags. Again, I'm not going to go over those in great detail. You can pause the video or you are eligible to access NRG's uh, bag policy via Google or on the link on the UHD Registrar's website. All guests and students are required to adhere to the NRG bag check policy. You will not be let into uh, the stadium if you uh, do not adhere to the bag policy. So if you're a graduate and uh, you've made it on time, but you have a big bag with hair products, hairspray, a flat iron, a mirror, some makeup, and you're going to get yourself together in the restroom, you're likely not going to be let in. Right, so you might look all pretty uh, out in the um, portable <laughs> restrooms and not able to get into the stadium. So make sure you take care of everything that you need to take care of and you read the back policy in granular detail so that you and your guests will be eligible to enter the stadium. In terms of guest entrances as well as student entrances, once you arrive on the property, um, you can see here students and guests will proceed through event security, uh, which includes metal detectors and back check before entering the building. Uh, for those of you who are graduating, uh, when you come through security, you uh, cannot have your cap and gown and regalia on you. Uh, when you go through security, you have to have clothes on, and I say that facetiously, but also seriously because people wear their regalia and then they can't take off their regalia to go through security because they're not appropriately dressed. So make sure you're appropriately dressed and that your cap and gown and hood, if you're a graduate student, is draped over your arm as you enter security. Because if you come with it on and you come with your hat on pinned uh, and your hair's done up and you've got bobby pins stuffed in your hair, they're gonna make you take the cap off to walk through security. So, uh, even guests will enter through security having to bypass or having to go through the metal detectors and uh, the bag check policy. Students will enter NRG through the Bud Light Plaza and then you're gonna proceed right to Amogee Gate, Amogee Bank Gate, one hour before the start of the ceremony. Uh, and you will proceed then once you get through security and through Amogee, Bank gate, you will proceed through uh, the entrance on the first floor of the stadium towards student check-in. There will be big A-frame signs on the floor once you pass Amogee Bank entrance, uh, directing you on exactly how uh, to um, get into the student entrance. Guests will enter through NRT Stadium via the Bud Light Plaza as well. Then they're going to proceed through the Ford uh, entrance, which is on the left, one hour before the start of the ceremony. Uh, guests will also proceed uh, through the external uh, escalators and be directed directly onto the concourse for them uh, to enter the, uh, the stadium. So I know there's been several questions here about um, 
guest entrances and what time, as well as students, both students and guests can enter one hour before the ceremony. So that is 10 o'clock and three o'clock uh, are when the doors open. That does not mean that that's when you should get there. That's when you should be at the doors ready uh, to be let in going through security before that. So a pictorial view of the check-in uh, and the directions of which both the guests and students need to go. Again, you're gonna be entering the parking lot through the NRG official parking uh, through gate number nine. You can see the yellow star uh, on the screen here is Bud Light Plaza. Uh, once you enter Bud Light Plaza, if you'll go to the right, you're gonna see Amagi entrance. That is going to be the student entrance. On the left is going to be the Ford entrance. Again, a reminder that uh, students who are coming through the Amagi entrance are only graduates, uh, and graduates must not enter the Amagi entrance uh, with their regalia and hat on, as well as their hoods. They should be draped over their arm as they go through security. Uh, and after security, you are welcome to put on your cap and gown. Take that into consideration for dress as well as hair. Student check-in for the ceremony. So once you are through MG Bank uh, and you've gotten through the MG entrance uh, on the floor, uh, you're going to walk um, on the floor. First floor under, oh, it's not the underground, it's the first floor of NRG, uh, and you're going to proceed through a, a hallway, and there will be a number of us in this UHD polo. I'm wearing the UHD polo today so that you can see uh, what uh, staff from UHD, faculty and staff, will be wearing uh, in the hallway and uh, throughout the ceremony. If you see anybody in a blue polo with the UHD logo, uh, you can ask any of us questions. We will then guide you uh, onto the floor uh, entrance uh, behind the stage, and you will enter the floor on sections 121 and 122 uh, student check-in. Um, you will come to student check-in. Uh, you will hopefully bring your walk card. A walk card is a card with your first, last name, your preliminary honors, and your degree. Uh, you do not have those just yet. We will be emailing you, so uh, as well as sending it out on social media and uh, and posting to the Registrar's Commencement website what dates you can come to campus to pick up your walk card. Uh, if, if you cannot come to campus, it's okay. We will have walk cards on a site, uh, but I can tell you uh, the lines to get your walk card may impact your attendance at the ceremony, meaning uh, if there are a lot of you who uh, either can't come or misplace your walk card or don't bring it, uh, and you back up the lines for the walk card, you may not be seated in your pre-seat pre to be able to walk uh, for the pre-ceremony um, or oh, student walk-in. So you will need to uh, pay attention to your email, social media, text messages, uh, to figure out when we will be posting the date for the walk cards. Again, it's not required. Uh, most students come and pick them up because they're on campus. Most students bring them and it really streamlines the process for check-in. So if you have your walk card, you do not need to go to the check-in tables. You still need to go to check-in to go have your pre-seat, uh, but you do not need to go to the check-in tables. The check-in tables are where you will go if you don't have your walk card or if you forgot it and they are by last name, uh, alpha. So, uh, you know, A through D, this line, C through, or whatever, you know, whatever the alpha is. Uh, and we break it down by how many students we have. So I can't tell you today which line it is because it will depend on how many students we have. We alphabetically break it down so that even each line is even. Uh, you do need to proceed to the restroom before you uh, have your pre-seat for the ceremony. So, once you've either checked in or you don't need to check in, there are no restrooms on the floor of the NRG Stadium once the ceremony begins. The ceremony is scheduled to be two and a half to three hours. Uh, so if you uh, do need to use the restroom, please make sure you use the restroom before the ceremony begins. This is the time at which uh, you will have the option to uh, use the restroom. Final seating for graduation candidates. So. Uh, at 1045 for ceremony one, if you are not in your seat, 
to uh, be preceded for the, the, the um, pomp and circumstance marking, uh, marching, you, the processional, you will not be allowed to participate in the procession. That means you and your family uh, who are in the audience will not see you walk in uh, because we have to line up at 1045 for us to begin the processional. The processional is when the pomp and circumstance music is going. It's this graduation music. Let me play it for a minute so you all can know what I'm talking about. So this music will be playing. Students will be walking around, coming from behind stage to go sit. If you are not in your seat by 1045 or 345 for the PM ceremony, you will not be walking in with the graduates. Don't panic. We will be bringing you in through a different way at the end of the processional to fold you in. So you will be able to participate in the ceremony, but you will not get the opportunity to walk uh, through the stadium, up the middle of the aisle and to your seat. Uh, you will, uh, we'll, we'll fold you in through the back. Uh, so you will get to come up the aisles and sit with your uh, fellow uh, students, but you will not get to walk from behind stage down uh, around the stadium and up the middle of the aisle. So if you can see this timeline is really, really tight. If you're arriving in the parking lot at 1020, it takes you 10 minutes to get from your car to security. Nombre, you already missed it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna walk, right? Just, just take your time, walk slowly because you're not gonna make it. You have got to be at the doors uh, past security, past parking, have already fought with the lady about your credit card being denied for the parking, right? Get the second credit card, charge it. You got to do all of that way before the doors open. So again, for ceremony one, uh, 1045, if you're not in your seat, uh, which is the pre-seat behind the stage after check-in, after the restroom, you will not be uh, allowed to process uh, with the majority of the students who will be walking around, as well as 345 for the second ceremony. Later, late arrivals will not be seated with graduates during the processional. They will be inserted during the end of the processional. Again, you'll be, uh, as soon as all the students are in, we'll walk you in and sit you at the back of the floor. So you'll still be on the floor. You'll still be able to walk with your, uh, your college. We'll still call your name. Uh, everybody will just know in the stadium, you know, those are the late people. They're in the back, so don't be late. Uh, we ask that you turn off your phone during the ceremony um, because it can interact with um, the audio, audio visual. We know that you're not going to. We ask that you, but at least silence your phone um, because uh, it can interfere with the audio visual. Make sure that you have your walk card. That walk card that you're either gonna pick up at UHD when we announce the time frame for walk card pickup or that you have gotten at check-in is the actual card that you will hand to the name caller on stage that will call your name and uh, will announce your name at commencement. So some of the lessons we've learned from these walk cards are we have some people who are really creative uh, and I mean, some innovative thinkers here. You cannot take your walk card uh, that we give you early on campus and decorate it. You can't take it and say, you know what? I got a 2.6 GPA, but I want to graduate summa cum laude. I'm just going to type it on there. Don't, right? The name colors have a specific sign, a specific ink, and a specific stamp that they're aware uh, of any changes that the registrar's office will make on the day of. So make sure your walk card is not folded into 10,000 pieces. Make sure it, your dog didn't eat it. Make sure you have not altered it by, you know, just changing your degree. You know, I think I want a master's. I know I'm graduating with a bachelor's in computer science, but I'm just going to write a master's in business administration uh, because they're not going to call it, right? So the walk card should not be altered, but it is something that you have to care for from the minute you pick up uh, as well, whether it's on campus or whether it's at check-in, because that is the card that we will call your name uh, from when you walk across stage. We ask that you stay until the end of the ceremony. There is not a departure uh, route for students who want to leave early. If you cannot stay for the duration of the ceremony, uh, please do not participate in the ceremony. I get this question a lot and I see a lot here in the question and answer uh, session. Uh, people are asking, 
you know, if we're graduating at 11, uh, what time should I make dinner reservations for uh, my family? If you're graduating at 11, I would make dinner reservations, right? Five or six, because when we dismiss, you still have a parking lot full of people trying to get out of NRG. So it, this isn't something that turns around really quick, right? If you're graduating in ceremony two, you need to have a welcome breakfast that morning at 7 a.m. Uh, because you're not going to make it to dinner. And what happens are students are emailing us the next day. They're upset because uh, their dinner appointment was at such and such time. I'm telling you today, you've got what? A couple of weeks to call the restaurant, make those changes, make any necessary uh, arrangements because you're not going to make it. And we don't want you to be mad with us because you thought you were going to make it. Let me tell you, you're not going to make it, right? So ceremony one, dinner at 637. Ceremony two, breakfast on the same day at 6 a.m. You're going to drink, eat some noodle. You're going to have that with your family. You're going to go get dressed and you're going to come and be on time for the four o'clock ceremony. Anything that you try to do in addition, we are not liable. We're not responsible. Traffic, weather, uh, NRG stadium, duration of the ceremony, uh, we cannot guarantee any of those things for you. Okay. Students will start processing, which means walking around from behind uh, the stage uh, around the arena to your seat on the floor. Uh, the first students will proceed at 11 a.m. for ceremony one and 4 p.m. for ceremony two. Uh, this is not kinda, this is not uh, maybe we're gonna proceed. Uh, we've got five more we're waiting on. Uh, this will happen with or without you. Uh, so the one time that you need to be on time uh, is this ceremony. At 11 o'clock a.m. and 4 p.m. promptly, the music will start. This music right here. Hold on, let me play it again just in case. 11 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Those of you running from the restroom, you didn't make it, right? We'll start right at 11 and right at 4. Uh, and those that are preceded and lined up at 1045, we'll be allowed to walk at 11, not 1046, not 1047. And those at, at 345 that are in line and ready to go will be allowed to walk, not, not 346, 347. You'll be held back uh, and we'll move you to the other side of the arena so we can bring you in. Faculty and platform party uh, process at 1130 and, 11, and 430. So what happens are the students process forward First, it'll take you about 22 to 27 minutes, depending on how many students there are, as well as how fast you all move. It is, it is uh, mind blowing to me, but what happens uh, is this music comes on during commencement, right? You start walking behind the curtain, you walk into NRG, and you see all these families going crazy, and you stop in all, and you back up the whole line, right? Because you're looking for your fiat, looking for your feels, there they are, look, oh God, and people are walking behind you, right? So you gotta kind of act like you're a celebrity at this point, right? You just gotta kind of walk out and just do your little small wave and keep it moving, walk, right? So if you can all do that, in 22 minutes, we can get you from one side of the stadium to the other. Nombre, we have TMZ, right? They're all smiling, taking pictures with their cell phones that they're not supposed to have on, taking cell phones. Um, and you're gonna back up the line. You're gonna make your commencement longer. So that dinner date you got, you made it long, not us, right? So unless you move it, this can take longer. The idea is that you will um, come out from behind the stage, you will walk promptly, you will find your people wave, they'll take their little picture, you'll come up the aisle, you'll sit and we'll process, right? So at 10, 11.30, sorry, 11.30 and 4.30, the uh, faculty will then march in, the stage platform will march in. You will stand up when the president, the vice president, the platform party uh, walk into the arena until they're on stage. And even when they're on stage, you'll remain standing until uh, the uh, mace carrier puts the mace on the stage and says, let the ceremony begin. Don't sit down because we have a national anthem. So guess who's singing the national anthem? Not me. But we do have somebody who's singing the national anthem uh, on staff, uh, and Dr. Roshana Mitchell will be providing the national anthem. 
Uh, we do have an introduction of guests. Chancellor Couture will be joining us for uh, the morning ceremony. She is uh, joining another uh, commencement for the evening ceremony, so she will not be at our afternoon ceremony, but she will be in attendance for the morning ceremony. You'll hear greetings from her as well as the Board of Regents. The president will bring remarks. Our guest speakers uh, for each ceremony will bring remarks. You'll hear from your student speaker, your fellow student, uh, one from, uh, there'll be one student for each ceremony that will be speaking. The deans will introduce the candidates uh, by college for graduation. We will award diplomas. Uh, when you get your diploma, you will uh, be getting a diploma scroll, um, which is a tube uh, that has a beautiful UHD logo on it. A and when you walk across the stage, uh, you are going to um, grab the diploma tube with your left and you're gonna shake with your right. Um, there will be an X on the floor once we call your name uh, and you come across the stage. You'll need to pause on that X. Uh, you're gonna look down uh, from the stage. There'll be a camera right in front of you uh, and you're gonna look at the camera for the picture. Um, most people who are walking across the stage, uh, they are looking at the president and talking to the president. If you look at the president and talk to the president while you're getting your diploma to, even though he's gonna be congratulating you and probably complimenting your hair or complimenting your shirt or your shoes, and if you're looking at the president, this is the angle that the stage camera is going to get that you're going to have the option to buy the picture, right? So when you walk across the stage, you are walking across the stage. You're going to grab the diploma tube with your left. You're going to shake with your right. You're not going to look at the president. He's going to be talking to you. Oh, thank you so much. Congratulations. Your hair looks wonderful. You're going to be looking at the camera on the floor. You're going to smile and you're going to say thank you. And then you're going to walk away. That's going to be the best pose for your picture, uh, for the stage picture. Uh, when you get across the stage, he's going to hand you a diploma to. Uh, inherently, we have students who believe uh, that they're going to open that diploma tube and there's going to be a diploma in it and they're going to be able to take a picture with it. Well, I hate to break your hearts, but in there is a nice little letter from me that says congratulations on completing your uh, diploma. We're so proud of you consider joining the Alumni Association, consider uh, offering $20.23 for your photo, uh, and welcome to the association. So that letter uh, is in there because you have not completed uh, all of your classes and final grades have not been submitted. So we cannot give you a diploma at commencement. We can't give you a transcript at commencement. What you will get from us is the diploma tube as well as a letter. So when you walk across, please do not email me the next day because I always get about 10 emails. Hey, I'm just wondering where my diploma is. You're not getting your diploma at commencement this year, right? Because grades aren't in, school is not done. And so we, we hope that you pass your classes, but we don't know, right? And so you have to make sure that you pass your classes and once all grades are in, which happens after commencement, then we will notify you officially of your graduation, as well as uh, give you instructions, and you'll hear here in just a moment, about your transcript and diploma pickup. When you begin to line up, uh, there will be uh, UHD staff that will help you uh, get up and walk in line before you walk across uh, the stage. You will need your name card, which is your walk card, uh, in your hand, so that you can hand it to the name caller. Uh, inherently, um, you're gonna get a name card. It'll say your name. Uh, my name has been since birth, uh, Daniel Villanueva, right? Uh, when you hand your card to the name caller, uh, the name caller is gonna do their absolute best to articulate uh, your name to the very best of their ability. Uh, we're going to ask that uh, whatever they call you in their very best attempt to read your name, you walk across the stage. I say that because there are students who will not move from that podium until they call their name the exact way in the dialect that they want, in the manner that they want. We want to respect your name, your heritage, your upbringing, your family, and we'll give every attempt 
uh, to read your name uh, in the very best dialect as well as language as possible. But uh, what has happened in the past is people will not move because they uh, don't like the way their name is called. Again, back to the commencement ceremony. They're gonna give it the best uh, appropriate articulation verbally that they can. And you're gonna move across the stage and grab your scroll. Uh, and you're gonna grab it with uh, your left and you're gonna shake with your right as well as a look at the camera. There is a name calling table at check-in. And if you are concerned about your name or if you have a difficult name, uh, or if you're particular about your name, I would encourage you to visit the name caller table at check-in and visit with the individuals who will be calling your name. Now, remember this is a very short time frame for check-in. So if you're particular about your name, you're traditionally late, you end up being late, you don't have your walk card and you need to use a restroom, you're not gonna see the name call, you're not gonna make it, right? So if you're very particular about your name, you need to be there very early, you need to have your walk card and you need to use the restroom and go directly to the name call table at check-in. Um, there are individuals who make themselves late because we're making announcements and they're still in the name caller line and they miss the line, right? So. If you're particular about your name, uh, you want it to be called uh, exactly how you'd like it, I encourage you to visit uh, the name caller table at check-in, but know that there is limited time uh, at check-in. We then move to formal conferring of the degrees by our provost, the president's proclamation. You're gonna move your tassels from right to left. Uh, the platform party uh, will recess down uh, the hall. Uh, and once the, the, the platform party, which are the people who are on stage, move down, uh, then you all will be dismissed uh, out of the arena and you will not be coming, you will not be leaving the arena through the doors that you came in. So uh, you will be going uh, out sections 134 and 139 and you will meet your family outside. Uh, you will not meet your family inside the arena. Uh, we ask that you plan for the ceremony to be about two and a half to three hours. Sometimes it's gone to three hours and 20 minutes because we have all these celebrities and superstars that are taking pictures. People don't have their walk cards. Uh, they're not walking when their names are called. And so you can help us expedite this entire uh, ceremony if you're paying attention uh, to your surroundings. Uh, you will be dismissed outside of NRG. I see some questions regarding, can you decorate your cap and can you wear uh, a variety of stoles? I see some heritage stole questions. The answers are yes, you can decorate your hat. We ask that you be considerate of people who are participating in the ceremony uh, and that you uh, do not decorate your hat to the umpty having uh, anything that would distract students sitting behind you. When you're on the floor and you are uh, a graduate, People are sitting behind you and they want to see the ceremony as well. Uh, so make sure that you don't have big flowers coming out, you don't have a castle on top, um, because people behind you would like to see too. They, they, they're graduating as well, right? So you can decorate your cap, uh, make sure it is appropriate and make sure it does not block people's view from behind. Um, in addition, uh, we will have a cap decorating uh, contest. So we'll be walking around taking pictures, of your caps uh, and awarding some random diploma frames to those caps that are unique, uh, that are catchy, that are intelligent, and, and that are, are really nice. Um, see here. In terms of accommodations, if you require special accommodations for commencement uh, ceremony, please contact our Office of Disability Services. This is the email as well as the phone number for you to contact them. Um, this can uh, require, the, the, the special accommodations could be uh, anything from uh, I'm pregnant and need special assistance walking, uh, I have a broken toe, um, I have any mental health issues that you all may be aware of, I'm diabetic and I need food so I have, to have a special bag with me, any special accommodations that you need, uh, I have medicine that I must take, uh, I'm under doctor's orders for uh, restroom breaks. Any special accommodations that you need, please reach out to our Office of uh, Disability Services and they will uh, be able to help students with accommodation. I do see some questions coming in about guests who are in wheelchair um, and anybody who uh, may need assistance uh, regarding uh, their guests. 
their guests will need to notify NRG upon entrance and NRG will have staff that can help place uh, guests in the appropriate seating arrangements for the stadium. The university uh, is unable to accommodate guests, meaning we don't have special entrances, NRG does. NRG does have staff that will help uh, individuals with uh, canes, anyone with a wheelchair, anyone who needs special accommodation. What you see here on the screen are for students. So the Office of Disability Services, the email address and phone numbers are, um, are uh, for UHD graduates participating in the ceremony. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go through some of these questions I see here before I move over to post ceremony. Uh, you do have to wear a UHD cap and gown purchased by the bookstore. You cannot create your own cap and gown. Um, some of these questions I've already answered. Uh, there will not be a translator for Spanish speaking guests during the ceremony. Uh, there is a uh, picture in picture translator for um, uh, let's see here. All right. I'm sorry, these questions, they're rolling so fast, y'all. Uh, are you required to wear a stole? It, it's up to you. Uh, so like a screen that is translating, the translator uh, are for um, deaf translators. They are not for Spanish speaking translators. Um, I think that those are all the questions about the ceremony. In terms of post ceremony, uh, the commencement scroll received at the ceremony again, uh, includes a congratulatory letter. Uh, diplomas uh, will note the major you're graduating with, but do not include minors, concentrations, or certificates. So when you get your diploma, please do not ask us to reprint it because it doesn't have a concentration or minor. Minors and concentrations are articulated on the transcript, but not on the actual printed diploma. Uh, official transcripts will note your major, minor concentration, as well as final Latin honors designations. So again, what you're walking with at the ceremony is preliminary because we don't have official grades. What will be on your diploma and official transcript are the uh, final honors designations. Diplomas are typically available six to eight weeks after the end of the term. Uh, so we will be communicating with you all via social media, email, as well as our website, uh, letting you know uh, that uh, diplomas are available for pickup. If you are unavailable to come to campus to pick it up, um, that's okay. We will mail it to you directly with the last updated mailing address on file. So if you are an online student, if you're moving, uh, if you got a job and you're headed to Arizona, um, you need to update uh, your last mailing address because what we will do is if you're unavailable to pick it up, we will mail your diploma to the last address on file. So some people get mad because their mom got the diploma, not them, and she won't give it to them, and she has it on the wall already. And how do I tell my mom that that's my, well, you got to call her and tell her. Um, so make sure the last address on file is the, the address that you would like for us to mail your diploma if you're not able to pick up your diploma during um, the diploma pickup. Uh, your final high school or your final high school, your final college transcript will be ready after all grades are entered. Uh, we are able to provide a letter of verification of graduation. So there are students who uh, are graduating uh, May 20th and start a job on May 21st or uh, May 26th, and the transcript may not be ready as well as the diploma. Uh, but we are able to provide a letter to your employer or to any graduate school notifying them that pending completion of the final grades, you will be awarded XYZ. Um, so if you do need that letter for, um, for a job, for graduate school professional studies, uh, please reach out to the registrar's office. They are able to provide that letter uh, very, very soon. Um, you do need to complete exit counseling for student loans. So if you have uh, taken out any student loans during your undergraduate or graduate time here at the university, uh, you do need to complete your exit counseling, uh, which means you're gonna have to go online into uh, my UHD and complete the exit counseling for us to be able to release uh, your diploma or transcript. 
Okay, here are some FAQs that I'm going to go through. I've seen some of these questions here, and I hope they're answering them as fast as, as you all are asking um, for us. Uh, so what should you wear? Well, you need to wear appropriate clothes underneath your regalia. Uh, you should be uh, considering your footwear. Uh, we inherently have people who like to wear um, five-inch heels who've never worn heels in their life. Uh, and it's a real treat for us. We get to see them struggle uh, walking through the stadium, walking on the stage, falling off the stage. I'm kidding, right? But uh, you can see uh, that this is going to be a lot of walking. Uh, so for those of you who have foot problems, you may consider wearing bedazzled tennis shoes, flats, boots, whatever makes you comfortable. Um, there is no formal dress code except that we ask uh, that you understand that you're representing your family, your college, the university, uh, and that you be appropriately dressed. What items are not prohibited in the stadium? Flowers, balloons, et cetera, noisemakers. Um, NRG does not allow uh, flowers, balloons, noisemakers from external uh, guests brought in, but there are vendors inside. Once you come in, uh, once your guests come in, there are vendors that will be selling UHD t-shirts, some flowers, uh, as well as some congratulations signs that you uh, or your guests can purchase. Can I store my personal belongings somewhere? No, there is nowhere for you to put a bag, a backpack, uh, anything down, a purse. There's nothing, there's no place. In the pre-staging area, you will uh, be seated uh, for you know 20 to 30 minutes. And once you uh, process, you're gonna go sit in a seat. Remember those late students that I said are at the very back? Well, they're gonna disrupt your seating. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna pull them in when they're supposed to have actually graduated and call their names. And then they're gonna go sit down with where they should have been. So you're not even gonna to return to the seat likelihood that you sat in before your name was called. So you can't think, oh, let me sneak my purse and I'm gonna put it under my seat because when I come, because you're not gonna be in the same row. Or you're going to be like two rows back because all the late people are now embedded in the line and they've taken your seat, which moved you down. What if I arrive late? Just come on. Come on, arrive late. Um, we'll check you in. Uh, we're going to walk you out with all the latecomers. We'll make a public announcement. Oh, yes, everybody look to your left. Here come all the late. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, we, you will be able to, to come in uh, the ceremony late. Um, but you will not be able to possess. Where can I get my cap and gown? You can buy it from Herf Jones online or the UHD uh, bookstore. What if I need special accommodations? I think I covered that uh, by the disability services. What if guests need special accommodations? I've, uh, I've uh, covered that. How many guests can I invite? You can invite as many as you want. The stadium uh, has capacity. What if I have children with me? If you have children with you and you're a graduate, you need to try and make arrangements uh, with someone to have your child in the audience. There is not a way for us to have someone behind uh, the screen uh, take care of your child. Uh, and so you do need to figure out child arrange, child care arrangements before the ceremony. Can I take the Metro Rail? You can take the Metro Rail. It's actually a smart way to get there. Um, parking is really tough to get in and out, but if you go to the stop before the Metro well and you park there, it's like $8. You get on the Metro rail, the next stop, you don't have to really wait for anybody. So yes, you can take the Metro rail as a student or as a guest. And where can I get dropped off if I'm not driving? Well, everybody's going to be taking Uber um, and everyone's going to be coming. Uh, so you can just try to get uh, dropped off as close to the stadium as possible. But remember, there's about a thousand students graduating in each of these ceremonies. And, you know, I know that when I graduated, I invited all of my family. I mean, everybody, um, even, yeah. So 50, 60 people times each graduate, everybody's bringing their own car, or they're driving in, it's gonna be um, chaos. Now, one of the things that I wanna make sure you also understand of, uh, most of you live in Houston, and if you're not from Houston, uh, listen very closely to this. Houston traffic is horrible. The roads are closed sporadically. You never know. We'll just close I-10 on a Tuesday at three, never make an announcement. You're just driving and then you're like, oh, I-10's closed. So make sure you're prepared for bad weather, uh, which will impact Houston driving. Roads that are closed, 
uh, as well as an enormous amount of people coming into NRG Stadium with lines of traffic and parking to get into the parking lot, as well as to get into the stadium. Uh, the day before we had commencement a couple of years ago at NRG, they sent us a note on Friday night to let us know the main exit from 610 was going to be closed. Hence why you should follow us on social media because we were able to spread that information. Uh, but you just never know um, the traffic, you never know uh, the weather, um, and you don't honk at anybody, and you uh, don't know uh, what is forthcoming. So that is the official end of the presentation. I do want to look uh, at the question and answers that are being asked to make sure that uh, I have at least addressed anything. If you do have any questions that are remaining, please take the next four to five minutes to put them in the question and answer uh, function here uh, within the webinar, and I'll try to answer as many as we can. Valerie said, how many tickets are we getting? Uh, you don't need any tickets. Can guests bring professional cameras? Check out the NRG bag policy on the professional cameras. Where can I follow on social media? You can follow the registrar's office on social media. You can also follow uh, me on social media. I'll bring that up so you can see it here on the screen uh, in case you want to follow. Are the seats for graduating students on the floor very close together. Can we move the seats over a little to make space for larger people? You know, I asked that question. When we were setting up, I said, you know, I'm a big boy and these seats are, you know, I, uh, no, they, they're, they're gonna be clipped together and not the ones where you can pull apart. Um, so I can already tell you it's gonna be a snug fit. Um, we are working to see if we can have enough seats on the floor that may give us a little space, but, um, for now, I think it's going to be a tight fit, um, but I'm not certain that we know the exact answer because we may have a workaround. Uh, where do you get your cords? You need to check with your advising center. Um, people are saying, uh, who can I email before besides UHD graduation uh, to ensure that I'm RSV? If you just email them, um, they're working as fast as they can. So. You know, I just emailed them. I didn't get a response. We'll, we'll get back to you. Bachelor of Science for Interdisciplinary is in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Can I bring one water bottle? No. Is there a live for people out of uh, town? Yes, there is a live stream of uh, the ceremony, it'll be streamed live from Facebook as well as the UHD Registrar's webpage. Um, so you can click there and see it live. Uh, you can send that link to anybody and it'll be live streamed both ceremonies. Is there assigned seating for the guests? No, for students, yes. Can guests bring snacks and drinks? The answer is no, and concession stands are not open. Where do I get the link for streaming? It'll be on UHD social media, uh, as well as the commencement website. Students cannot bring water. There'll be water stations behind the stage uh, with water cups that you're able to drink from before we uh, process from behind the stage uh, to the front of the stage. The link for the live is not up, you all. I can't give you the link yet. It'll be up probably the day before on UHD's official uh, Facebook page as well as UHD Registrar commencement webpage. Stoles do not have to be purchased. You are able to wear stoles uh, if you'd like, but they are not required to be purchased.
If you're unable to shake hands, how am I able to communicate with someone before I can walk uh, as an accommodation? If you come on stage and there are religious or uh, it's your discretion not to shake hands, you can come across the stage holding um, your hands in the form of an X across the stage and that'll notify uh, the president as well as anyone else that you uh, respectfully decline a handshake. The stole can be any design, yes, Hannah. Can we wear a wristlet wallet with us? Yes, but you need to check the clear bag policy. Can we re-enter if you leave the stadium? No. Can we bring balloons? No. Can we work towards a order from other organizations? Yes. What happens to bag and such after security? You have to keep it with you. Do we need an ID to check in? No. Mm. Hold on, I'm trying to scroll up. Okay, I believe we've answered all of the questions in the question and answer session. We've also, can you bring signs? No. Whitney says the 4 p.m. Uh, ceremony should arrive at 2 p.m., correct? Uh, 4 p.m. ceremony, if I were you, I would arrive there at 2.30 to make sure I get a parking spot, to make sure I walk and get into checking. Two o'clock is early. Um, that's probably the best time you should be there, two o'clock, but I'd push it for 2.30. Uh, no, no one else can pick up your walk card for you. Can our family bring fat heads with our faces on them? I believe so. People are asking specific questions about pregnancy. You should contact our accommodations with disability services so they can help arrange any special accommodations. Can you take me out to dinner? Yeah, you can take me out to dinner. Mary Jo, what is Mary Jo? Are small posters allowed? Um, no. Masters of Art in Teaching is for the College of Public Service. If you're interested in figuring out who the student speakers are, they will be announced on the commencement site. We are working with them currently. Um, and they will be uh, announced as well. You cannot bring air horns. I say that all the time, but somehow people get in with air horns. Guests do not need tickets. The commencement will be available on the UHD Facebook page. That's correct, as well as the commencement website. You cannot wear your bachelor's graduation regalia for your master's graduation ceremony. Uh, there also is a graduate pudding ceremony on May 18th uh, at, on campus. Um, and so if you are a graduate student and you're interested in attending, you should have received an email from the provost office inviting you to a graduate student pudding ceremony. That is different, separate, and apart from the commencement ceremony. The hooding ceremony allows for the faculty uh, to hood graduate students with their hoods before the ceremony. So graduate students are eligible, per, eligible to participate in the graduate hooding ceremony as well as commencement. Uh, the hooding ceremony doesn't replace commencement. Uh, the hooding ceremony is not required for graduate students, uh, but you will not be hooded at the commencement ceremony. You will be hooded at the graduate hooding ceremony. Uh, you can find additional details about the graduate hooding ceremony on the commencement website 
It is Thursday, May 18th, I believe at 7 p.m. What side should I tell my family to sit on? I can't tell you that because every time I try to take a guess because we really don't know, um, you'll be mad at me because I'll tell you the wrong side. We really don't know where you'll sit because we haven't gotten complete RSVPs. You can see all these people asking about how they RSVP. So once we know the final number, then we'll be able to decide which side you'll be sitting on. But by that time, we won't be uh, having contact with you anymore. So um, I can't tell you what side you're in. If they want to for sure see you, I would have them sit at the back of the arena because both lines go to the back and then come up. But I can't tell you which side uh, to see you. But again, the back of the arena is kind of the farthest part from the stage, so it's really up to you. Okay, I believe that we have answered uh, all of the questions here. Um, we will, uh, again, uh, post this recording online on YouTube as well as um, social media and um, on the commencement webpage. So if you or any of your fellow students have missed any of this information or need additional information, uh, please feel free to reach out to me directly on social media. I will respond or you can reach out via email to uhdgraduation at uhd.edu. Uh, we will be providing updates again on social media, as well as, um, somebody asked for this code again, as well as, uh, what's this code, sorry, as well as email and text messages. We'll stay on for just a couple more minutes to answer the question, but this official, the, the incoming questions, but this officially concludes the uh, orientation session for commencement for spring 2020, 2023. Uh, again, on behalf of the administration, our faculty and staff, congratulations to you and your families. And we're so excited to see you uh, May 20th at NRG Stadium. Thanks so much.